intermittent fasting. I get a lot of questions about intermittent fasting and a lot of people think that it's this new evolutionary thing that is going to be this secret hack that, you know, if I start doing this, I'm going to start seeing some massive results. Now, I personally love intermittent fasting and I've done anything from an 8, 16, 24, I've even gone up to a 48 hour fast. In fact, I've heard of people doing seven day fasts and yes, it does lead to weight loss. And in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to do it and why people are losing weight from intermittent fasting. So number one, we have to understand that this isn't new. Number two is that there are three types of fasting, in my opinion, a true fast, zero calories or low calories. And number three is that it's a great tool to control eating. And in this video, I'm going to cover all those three topics. So the first thing I would tell you is to start where you can. And if you remember, we have a five day mini fast challenge that we can issue to you. And it basically gives you a progressive fasting schedule that's going to build you up to doing a longer fast. But the thing you have to understand is you don't have to try and do this massive fast right off the bat. When it comes to fasting, you know, most of us should stop eating around midnight. So if you stop eating at midnight and then you eat again at eight, that's already an eight hour fast. Now my recommendation for the most of us that work a regular job during the day, so like let's say like a nine to five or somewhere around that time frame, then my recommendation for you is to start your fast at 8 p.m. So what does that mean? Is that 8 p.m. is when you stop eating. And the three types of fast, like what I talked about, is a true fast, meaning that you can only have water. Water would be your 100% true fast, but I would still classify having black coffee or black tea as a true fast because water, coffee, tea, they have very minimal impact on your blood sugars. Now, a zero calorie fast is, let's say you stop eating at 8 p.m. and you go ahead and have some EAAs or you have uh, greens or anything that has any artificial sweeteners, even natural sweeteners, they have a minimal impact on your blood sugars, but there's still that chance that that insulin response can kick you out of your fasting phase. And as such, it's not a true fast, but it's close. And then the last but not least is a low calorie fast. So a lot of people will stop eating at eight and let's say they don't eat until noon. That would technically be a 16 hour fast, but some people must have cream in their coffee. And so a lot of people will do like a coffee and they'll add a little bit of cream and maybe like a natural sweetener like stevia, which has minimal impact on your blood sugars. But even that little bit of calories from the cream Yes, it won't kick you completely out of your fast, but it does have an impact on your fast, so it's not a true fast. You've just basically condensed the amount of calories that you're eating in a short period of time. And so that's what I talked about with the controlled eating is that if you don't eat between eight and noon, well, that's gonna prevent you from the early morning snacking, but it's also gonna prevent you from the late night snacking. If you only have eight hours to eat, then your chances of overeating significantly reduce. In fact, a lot of people that are overeaters and maybe they don't need a lot of calories, I would generally put them on a higher fast, like an 18 hour fast, because then they have a shorter window to eat, overeat the foods that they love. So you can still eat everything that you love, but you have to eat it in a short window. And most people, if they're hitting their water goals and they try to eat all the food, let's say the person's allowed like 2000 calories, to eat 2000 clean calories in a short window like that, you're gonna be extremely bloated, full, and there's no way you're gonna be able to do that long term. And so if you stuck with something like a short window like that, by having that decreased window, you're unable to eat and overeat the calories that are causing you to gain weight. Now, when it goes through how many hours should a fasting be, they all have different things that they affect the body and how they manipulate your body fat. So starting with a 16 hour fast, and it, I'm talking about a true fast. So from 8 p.m. till noon, you don't eat, okay? Now in the 16 hours, your body has enough time to digest the fuel. And especially if you live an active life and you've done a workout, then your body has burnt through all the calories that you consumed the night before. And once they burn through all the calories that you've consumed the night before, this is when they're gonna start to dip into your fat cells. So in that 16 hour window, if you do it seven days a week for the next three months, you're gonna actually see your body fat reduced. Now this obviously goes with 
you're not overeating and you're eating more calories than your body's actually burning. But if you were just to eat the same amount of calories every single day, that hasn't caused you to gain weight over the past three to four months. And if you did this intermittent fasting, you're gonna see a reduction in your body fat. Now into a 24 hour fast and you think, oh RJ, that's crazy. And I remember we're doing my first 24 hour fast and I was like, this is nuts. Like nobody does this. And then you do one, you're like, it wasn't even that bad. And so a 24 hour fast, you're most definitely burning through fat because there is no calories left. And especially if you went and did a workout, you got your 10,000 steps, your body is now burning fat. But into the 24 hour fast is when your body's actually doing some cellular restoration, meaning the small weakened cells, some would even argue that cancerous cells that are dying and they're just lingering in your body actually get engulfed by your stronger cells. And so you can actually have some anti-cancerous effects by doing these 24 hour fasts. It's into the 48 hour fast now where fat is 100% your primary fuel source. And it's at this point, yes, you're getting that cellular restoration where the weakened cells get consumed by the stronger cells because they need fuel. And so 48 hours seems like a very long time. And what I wanna to do today is give you a fast eat, fast schedule that I've done with many clients that have worked to keep them sane within those 48 hours, to make them not feel like they're losing muscle, to make them feel like they still have energy, yet they're taking advantage of those 16, 24, and 48 hour perks that you would get, but without going through the struggle of it. Because I did a 48 hour true fast, and honestly, it was such a struggle. So here's the fast eat fast. What you're gonna do, let's say you start on a Sunday. So on a Sunday, you pick the calories that aren't over what you normally burn in a day. So for instance, for you, it could be like 1500 calories, okay? So 1500 calories is where you feel good, you feel fed, you don't feel full, and you don't feel starved. And so you would eat that on a Sunday. Then you would stop for 24 hours. Then you eat at the 24 hour mark. But what you're gonna do is just eat something to, to make your body feel like, okay, I'm being fed, I'm not going into starvation mode, and I have you know these calories that are in me, so I'm gonna distribute these properly so that I don't lose muscle and I don't feel like I'm losing my energy. So usually that meal, I'll set somebody up with a lean protein. So for instance, for a female, it's usually six ounces of chicken with a cup of spinach and maybe some like red wine vinaigrette. For a male, it would be a chicken breast and it would be another like fattier chicken, so like a chicken thigh, and then the cup of spinach. Now, why the chicken breast versus a protein shake? The protein shake is always already liquided, and there isn't any fats or carbs generally in the proteins, and as such, that protein gets digested very rapidly, and it could actually make you feel hungrier. Whereas if you actually take a whole food source, it takes up more time and more energy to break it down and use it as fuel, but it's gonna help you to feel fuller longer. And so by having this small meal, it's gonna make you mentally feel like, okay, hey, I'm not starving, I'm being fed, and it's gonna give nourishment to your body. Then you're going to stop eating again, but you're gonna consume what's called EAAs. Okay, now the EAAs, yes, it's pulling you out of your fast, but we're also bringing you down into a low calorie zone. So when you get into this low calorie zone, again, you don't have to necessarily be doing a fast in order for your body to use fat as fuel, but we're lowering the calories, which means that with lower calories means weight loss, but you're also not consuming enough calories that your body has to go into its fat stores to be used as fuel. And so the EAAs, yes, have artificial sweeteners in it, but the EAAs are what your muscle requires for repair and to keep rebuilt. So you can continue to work out, not lose muscle, drop body fat, lose a little bit of weight, and also build up the discipline of intermittent fasting. So guys, this is there isn't much new about intermittent fasting, but I have some small hacks that I do with my belly burn clients, and that's one of the biggest ones. So go ahead, if you're ready, don't just go from no fasting to my fast eat fast challenge. Work your way up into it, do 12 hours you know, for a couple days, see how that goes. If you don't faint, you still have good energy, you feel okay, bump yourself up to 16 hours. You're good with 16 hours, do that for two or three days, bump yourself up to 24 hours. Try that, try a couple, a couple of those like over the next three weeks. You can't do a 24 hour fast every single day because that'd be just a seven day fast. So you do a 24 hour fast once a week, 
do a couple 16s, do a couple 12s, do that for about three weeks, then build yourself up to this 48 hour fast, my fast, which is called the fast eat fast. Get your EAAs, get your little bit of chicken in you, and let's really track and see the changes that happen with your body fat, how does your muscle look, and what's your energy like. So guys, give the video a like, make sure that you hit subscribe. I hope you like these intermittent fasting tips, and I'll see you on the next video.